everybody. It's Stu, AG6AG, and I got another video for you. I am going to cover the minimum distance exposure calculations for your antennas. Now, the reason that we're doing that is we're, we're right on top of field day here, and a lot of the local clubs by me are starting to plan out the design of their, uh, you know, antennas and everything else. They're going to go to public places and they're going to operate. Now, we're responsible to make sure that our exposure isn't going to be over limits, even for temporary stations. Um, so what I wanted to do is I wanted to show you how to easily calculate out the minimum distance. So while you're designing your site, you'll have those minimum distance numbers in your head and you'll be able to say, oh, gee, you know, that, that area I'm going to have to tape off or whatever. Okay, so that's what this is all about. Oh, hey, if you think of it, click on the subscribe button, will you? Uh, it really helps me out. And also, if you have any comments or questions, go ahead and make them down in the comments down there. We try to answer the questions uh, at least uh, within a few days, okay? Hey, and with that, let's get going with this. Hi everybody, Stu, AG6AG, and today we're going to take a really quick look at calculating minimum distance based on power and frequency uh, for evaluating the exposure ratios that uh, people are under being close to the antenna. I have two previous videos goes way into depth on the subject, the mathematical formulas, all the rest of the stuff. What I'm going to do right now, though, is it's a month till field day. Matter of fact, as of today, it's 28 days until field day, or, of course, four weeks, right? So if you're planning your layout for your club or whatever, you're going to want to keep in the back of your mind what those minimum distances are for band and power, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you real quick, okay, how to calculate that stuff. So let's go ahead and get started with that. Now, obviously what we're looking at over here is we're looking at our limits for maximum permissible, permissible, exposure. And there's two tables here, or actually an A table and a B table. Down at the bottom is going to be the one that we're interested in. That is the uh, uncontrolled or general population calculating number to find out what that maximum uh, permissible exposure is. That uh, And it's measured, of course, we want to look at it in um, power density. So Hey, guess what? For all the frequencies of interest that we're going to be working on, which is going to be 1.34 to 30 megahertz, we want to look and multiply our factor there of 180 divided by frequency squared. So we'll just keep that formula in mind. Why are we using that formula? Well, if you haven't watched my other two videos, I recommend you do, but unexposed, or excuse me, uncontrolled or general population or people just walking by, okay? So we want to get those numbers. Those are the ones we're going to base it on. And the formulas I'm going to run right here, I'm using absolute worst case numbers, okay? What does that mean? Well, you know, fairly simply, all that really means is that I am going to take the actual absolutely worst case scenario. I'm looking at power, um, your PEP, without any coax loss. I'm looking at uh, a 2.2 dB gain, which would be a dipole if that's what you're setting up. Again, your numbers will vary based on that. So you may need to redo these calculations with a little bit different number there. Also, I'm basing this number completely on the concept of 100% duty factor and 100% duty cycle, which is almost impossible for you to do, okay, if you're running sideband or whatever. So again, if you don't understand what I'm talking about, go ahead and take a look back uh, at the other two videos that I did on exposure, okay? But with that, let's run the numbers really quick, and I'm going to show you just an example for 20 meters to start with. So what I want to do first off is I need to calculate what that uh, maximum power density 
is. So let's take a look. I'm going to go ahead over here to my calculator and I'm going to take 180 and I'm going to divide it by the highest frequency squared uh, that is inside the 20 meter band. So we would all know that that would be 14.350 and we need to square that. And what that's going to do is that's going to give me my power density, or at this point, we'll just call it 0 0.875. Like I said, I want to take the worst possible numbers here, okay? So I'm going to make a note of that over here on the left, 0 0.875, okay, for that power density. Now what I want to calculate out is I need to calculate what my dB gain is, right, or what my actual ERP is coming out of the antenna. I am going to base this on 100 watts because if we're running outside on field day, chances are that's what we're running. So I'm going to base this on 100 watts, okay, and I'm going to add into that the 2.2 dB of a dipole. Okay, so I'm going to multiply that by uh, 10 to the power of 2.2 divided by 10. And that should give me 166 watts. Okay, I'm also going to do something a little different. You see how I've got power multiplied by 2.56? There's this thing called uh, reflective power, called ground reflection, or it could be reflecting off other antennas. You may have multiple antennas. you got to kind of work these factors out because it changes exposure ratios and things like that. For our particular argument, we're just going to say that, you know what? Uh, I'm, I'm not going to actually calculate that number out too, too densely, but I am going to add in what the uh, scientists say is a proper calculation for uh, reflection power, and that is six, or excuse me, 1.6 squared, which is 2.56. So I'm going to take this number right here. I'm going to go ahead and multiply that by. 2.56, and that's going to give me 425 watts. Sounds like a lot, right? We're just going to make a note of that. All right. Now, let's calculate out our power density, right? So I'm going to go ahead here, and I'm just going to go in and say, all right, give me the square root of 425,000 milliwatts divided by my max power density, which is 0 0.875. And then I need to divide that by 4 pi, giving me 196, we can call it 197 um, centimeters. Let's go ahead, we'll divide that by uh, 100 to get meters. Let's uh, multiply it now by 3.28 to get feet. That means, well, you know, 6.44, so let's say 7 feet's the magic number. So from the closest point of the antenna, or the emitter, okay, of the emitting end, or the emitting side of the antenna, the closest anyone can be to that antenna is about seven feet in order to be in the uncontrolled group. Now that isn't all that much, right? That's not a huge distance to worry about. All right, and that's really all there is to it. Now I am going to uh, I'm going to help you out a little bit. Let me uh, move to this. Here's the numbers that I calculated out uh, for this little experiment. Notice that 10 meters is 14 feet. That's minimum distance based on the numbers that we calculated here, based on 100 uh, watts and uh, a dipole and, of course, what you would call um, uh, reflection power. Okay, And you notice as we get higher and higher and higher uh, in uh, uh, wavelength, okay, 
Uh, our frequency gets lower and lower, and our distances get lower and lower. At 160 meters, um, you know, you have to have a maximum distance of one foot, okay? Now, again, use these, nu these numbers kind of as a guide, you know, to when you're setting up your antennas and things like that or planning out your antenna deployment. You still have to go through for the antennas and do the calculations properly and put it on a piece of paper. Um, there are websites that you can plug the numbers in, so it's fairly helpful uh, and easy to do. Uh, just make sure you have copies of that at field day and file them someplace in your you know, club uh, archive or whatever. So if the FCC ever asks you to produce the documents and the calculations, you have them. All right? Hey, you know what? That's it. I told you it would be a fast one. I want to thank you for joining me and hope to hear you on the air. Well, there you go. Uh, I told you it would be fast. It's just a really, really quick video, and I hope that it helps you out because, you know, if you're sitting there trying to figure out where all the antennas are going for your event, well, you really need to take this stuff into consideration now. And like I said in the video, you still got to do your calculations. Once you get all this stuff up in the air or and everything else, you've got to break that all down. You may have to take into consideration some additional formulas that you're going to find in uh, Bulletin 65. So read through the stuff, you know, know the truth, the truth shall set you free. But this at least gives you a basis to design on and gets you going right now so you don't have this little monster in the back tapping you going, but what about distance, but what about distance? Hopefully this helps. Anyway, hey, if you liked the video, give me a thumbs up, will you? And of course, I hope you subscribe and any questions, as always, make them down in the comments. This is Stu, AG6AG, and I hope I hear you on the air.